All right, so recently I've been kind of working on a little side project where I'm creating a framework using TypeScript to allow people to quickly spin up a REST API in Node. I'm basically just wrapping Express and just providing a lot of useful features on top of Express to kind of hit the ground running with an actual like production ready application. I kind of talked about this already, but I wanted to share like how did I set up this project? Because I think there's a, some good information I can talk about here that you may not know about if you're kind of starting off. So first of all, I'm starting off with a monorepo approach. So we have a package JSON in the, the root of this directory. And if you don't know what a monorepo is, it's basically a directory that has a bunch of different subdirectories. And all those subdirectories basically are your main projects split up into smaller subprojects. Right? It just helps with maintainability and managing and decoupling. So first off, I'm using npm. Uh, over here, you can see there's a workspaces, and I basically say anything in this packages directory is going to be considered a workspace. Now, what that allows you to do is a couple of things. The first thing is if you have a bunch of dependencies inside your packages, when you do an npm install, it's actually going to install those at a higher level if there's any overlap, right? So it kind of saves on your disk space and puts common utility packages at the higher level, which is pretty good. But also what you can do is if you are in the root of the directory, so if I look here, let me go up to, if you're in the root of directory, you can actually say npm run, and then I can say w, or hyphen w, and that stands for workspace, and then I basically type in the name of the workspace. Now, the confusing part about this is that the name of your workspace project, you actually have to go into your sub project here. And notice that this one also has a package JSON. So if I look at this one, this one's called Web Dev Cody slash create launchpad. So if I go ahead and say npm run dash w, type in the workspace name, which is going to correspond to this name here. And I just run, for example, let's just try running test and see what happens. That's actually going to run the subscript that lives in this package JSON, right? So it kind of dives into your directory and runs the script for you. It's kind of convenient. So you can do all of your work inside the same working directory. Now these tests fail because I don't actually have like the app running. So we can actually do another one. I'll say, instead of test, I'll say dev. That should spin up my little API. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to another terminal here. And I will do the same thing, npm run dash w, and then I'll say test to make sure my tests pass because I have been kind of messing around with the code. And it looks like they're broken. So we're not gonna waste time trying to fix those. But yeah, that's kind of how the workspace works. So I have one here called create launchpad inside this create directory. And this is like a CLI script that you can run to basically scaffold up an entire project using whatever framework I'm working on. The other package is called shuttle, and this has another package JSON. You look up here, it's webdevcody slash shuttle. And so what I'm doing is inside of this create package, I'm actually importing this shuttle service. So if I go down here, you can see that this package JSON inside of packages create depends on webdevcody shuttle and this is saying point to a file that's up a directory into shuttle so that's how i'm kind of linking this one to depend on the implementation of this one shuttle is like the actual like framework that spins up an api for you and gives you some useful validation and parsing and typescript inference but create is the tool that you can use to basically spin up a project but i want to show you this um, let me go ahead and show you i'm going to go to another directory here so I'm in like a Pokemon API directory that's blank. Do an ls, you see nothing shows up. I'm going to go ahead and just run my setup script, which is this one, npm create at webdevcody slash launchpad at latest. That's going to go to npm, and it's going to basically clone this project right here. basically pulls that project in. And since this package JSON has a bin right here, this is actually going to run this setup script the moment I run this. Um, if you don't know what npm create is, it's basically an alias. Um, imagine it takes this create keyword, it puts it in front of this with a hyphen. And that's why it basically is able to run this package, right? Because I have this called create hyphen launchpad, which allows you to say npm create, and then you can just type in the name of your package here. I know I'm like jumping all over the place, but I'm hoping there's some piece of information I'm teaching you today that's kind of new and useful. So again, if I were to run this, it basically goes and it clones this entire directory somewhere into your computer. And then since I have a bin, it goes ahead and runs this create launchpad setup script, which is in here. And what this is doing is it basically sets up a blank 
um, NPM project inside the current working directory that you're in. In our case, we're in this Pokemon API directory with no files in it. So it's going to basically set up a, a package.json file and installs the create launchpad package I just talked about. And then it basically copies all the files that are here and it puts them in your current directory here. And then it also copies the .env files. And then it basically copies your sample env file to the .env. And then it does an install on shuttle. In fact, I don't know if I even need to do this anymore because I think I've kind of, I, I wrote some hack to basically replace this with a star. So when you clone this package, this will be a star. and It'll grab the latest version of the shuttle framework. Um, but I'll leave it in just for now. And then you do npm CI, which is basically going to blow away your node modules and reinstall everything. And then it sets up your Prisma project, right? So again, I'm trying to set this little scaffold project up with Prisma so you can hit the ground running with some type of ORM. But enough talking. Let's just go ahead and run this and notice what it does. It's going to basically do everything I just talked about. It's going to ask you, do you want to install the latest version? Go ahead and say yes. And now it's actually scaffolding up the entire project that I just talked about, right? This, which is pretty cool. So if you ever wanted to like create your own bin file uh, that runs some type of shell script and does something, that's kind of how you could potentially do it. Just keep in mind that I kind of wrote this with Mac in mind, so I don't know if it's even going to work if you were to use something else. Um, and it looks like something is already failing, which is not good. But let's just go ahead and see if it'll continue. I'll say yes. I do not know why that just failed. But anyway, I swear this is working like an hour ago, and now when I decide to make a video, it's broken. That's how the universe works. Every time you need to do a demo, it just breaks right before your demo. So that's that. Um, now, I will say I had to like write some weird shell scripts to um, replace the file colon dot dot slash shuttle, and then like replace it with a star. Um, and then also revert it back. I, I don't know. This is kind of weird. Um, I couldn't figure out how to have like a project depend on another project. But when you publish it, I had to basically overwrite this with the star. I wasn't really sure how to do that. It seems kind of weird that I have to manually write some shell scripts to do that. So if anyone knows, leave a comment and uh, enlighten me on the approach to make this automatic. I want this to like be linked to my local shuttle project. But I want it to also update to be the latest version when I do NPM publish. So let's talk about a little bit about the code. Like, what did I change recently? Again, in the scaffolding, I added Prisma, and I'm trying to create a really basic to-do list application. So I have a to-do model, which has an ID and some text. And when you scaffold out this project, it's supposed to set up a SQLite database, and it sets up all your Prisma TypeScript files. And then it's also going to give you two routes to play with. I might add more in a, in a bit. But the first one is basically a get endpoint, which you can hit to get all the to-dos in your database. Super straightforward. The second one is a post request that you can use to create to-dos. Now, some things I kind of worked on since the last video was the typing for this input and output. The generics were like really not that good. Um, I think I just had an I here. So what I actually did is when you're doing TypeScript generics, you can add an extends keyword and that'll force the generic to be a specific like type, right? So in order to create an input and an output, you need to be making sure that you're returning a Zod type, which is what I did here. So like basically if you were to return a string, I made it so it's going to complain because like you're supposed to returning a Zod object and now you're returning some random thing, right? So that's kind of what I worked on in terms of the TypeScript inference, which I think makes this a little bit easier to use. I might even abstract this further and have this just return an interface that requires to have a parse method because I don't really like the fact that I'm coupling Zod to my framework. I, I feel like there's always a trade-off with frameworks, right? You want to use something that has like all the batteries included, but if the framework is too opinionated, you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot from like a year or two or now when like, for example, Zod goes out of fashion and there's something new that needs to be replaced. Then you have like this trouble of like, okay, well, how do I get rid of Zod? Because this whole framework is coupled to Zod. So those are the things I'm trying to think about and I'm trying to like trade off in my head. Like, is it better to couple Zod into the framework or should I make it agnostic? And basically you just return some type of object that has like a parse method, right? The parse method should return true or false. But then I have to go and figure out how to do all the TypeScript inference myself, which does not sound fun. So that's why I'm not doing that right now. I was trying to bundle Prisma into the framework as well, but I ran into a bunch of like random issues with TypeScript and like it couldn't find the Prisma types. 
So I said, you know what, let's not bundle an ORM into the actual like framework. Let's just, you know, give you that setup as a scaffold and you can kind of decide to use it or not if you want to kind of spin up a project using this launchpad CLI command tool. Some other things I recently added was before I was not accepting the query string parameters and the path parameters. Now I accept all that. Um, I think I do need to look more into like the pathing of things. Uh, kind of like how Next does it. Like if you wanted to, for example, allow someone to get a specific to-do by an ID, you could make a folder called like to-do slash, I don't know, you could say ID. And that'll basically set it as a path parameter URL. I haven't added that logic in yet, so that's kind of like next on my map. Again, I'm trying to do all like file-based routing for all the endpoints. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but I, I kind of like the file-based routing. I think it's easier to like just wrap your head around when you're starting off because it's just a convention people kind of know about. Uh, what else in here? So the scaffold project, it basically sets up Prisma, nothing too big there. And then it has a to-do a uh, file, to-dos file that exports a create to-do and a get to-dos, right? This is basically just using Prisma to either create a to-do or return all the to-dos in the database. Nothing too special there if you kind of already know Prisma. Uh, I talked about the schema already. This is the dependency injection I'm trying to like set up with the framework where basically, I do think there's good merit to having um, dependency injection. It kind of helps your code become decoupled and now you're depending on interfaces and not implementation details. So all the persistence methods, such as creating a to-do or getting a to-do, I'm trying to make sure that those are injected so that my actual controllers or my routes don't need to know about the implementation detail, right? They just know that there's a method they call and that thing will give them back to the to-dos. And the reason that was kind of useful was because until recently, I didn't even have, have Prisma, right? I just had like all the to-dos being stored in a hard-coded array here. And when you create or try to fetch the to-dos, it just basically reads that array. And the beauty of dependency ejection, or one of the beauties of it, is you can basically have a toggle where you can kind of switch out the implementation details at runtime. Like you could just add an if statement and say, if running locally, you could basically use like a persistence mock. If running in production, you can use a real database. It just gives you more flexibility when it comes to testing and running your stuff in you know, CI, CD, and just like mocking stuff out if you need to. So the last thing I want to talk about is I added a basic test folder, which has a test to kind of verify at an API level, can you create a to-do by doing a post request to the API? And I have like a helper create to-do method here that basically just does a fetch request to that using post. And then I also have another test that verifies if I were to create a to-do with text ligma, can I later fetch that to do out and does do I do, do I get an array that has like that object that I just created, okay? So out of the box, I do think testing is super important and all projects should have testing, which is why I'm kind of including it in my scaffold. You could always just delete this if you don't want to have tests and just delete the jest stuff. But at the very least, um, testing is set up for you out of the box. And I do provide a basic like API level type of test that you can start implementing with. I do recommend you still do unit testing, but I don't see anything in here that's even worth unit testing. Um, for a while, I was like, can I, can I test this handler? But then I'm like looking at this code. This code is so simple that I don't feel like it's even worth testing. It's kind of pretty, pretty basic. And then over here, we have inputs and outputs. And again, it's like, do we want to test this? Not really, because we assume the, the uh, shuttle framework would do what it needs to do when I return the right Zod object. But if you ever bring in some type of utility functions or some type of pure functions, I do recommend that you do some type of black box testing over those. But for right now, I'm just testing at a more of like an integration test level right at the API endpoint. And you can add more checks to verify statuses and stuff, but that's about it. I think the last thing I do plan to add in is maybe some type of authentication, authorization. Um, also, there's no support for like middleware, so there's no way to like upload files or anything. I haven't exposed the underlying express middleware feature. I don't know if I want to. I kind of don't like middlewares. I think it kind of obscures logic away from like what's actually happening on the business, uh, you know, controllers. But I might add something inside of here where I could maybe add middleware um, like this. And you could probably say like Molter and then like, I don't know, upload a file like this, um, upload 
file. Usually there's like a multer function you can call and that, that's kind of the idea I might take. Um, where instead of, uh, in, in front of every route, you could basically say like auth, that could be like a middleware function, uh, I don't know, is logged in, something like that. And then also like allow people to upload files. If you think this is a cool idea, let me know. I'll probably add it in. But uh, yeah, I don't really have it yet, but I do know it's probably going to be wanted if people actually use this framework. The code will be in the description, but you can basically go to my Launchpad project here. If you want to kind of like look through the code and see how I set up this monorepo, feel free to contribute if you want to. Um, I, will, I won't promise I'll merge your PRs or anything, but if you do want to find something to kind of help out with, like improving the documentation, I think this stuff is already outdated. I need to go through and update that. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little video. Have a good day. Happy coding.